Hello and welcome to another Glyph screencast for the YSDN3003 course in typeface design. This video is going to be a really quick one talking about fitting capital letters with the lowercase and also punctuation because I mentioned it in a couple other videos and I did not touch on it. However, I will touch on it in this one. Now I'm working with the Source Serif Pro font that uh, we worked with uh, in the previous video on spacing and uh, fitting serif type. And we'll work with this one because we've got these characters fit. Now, when you're fitting uh, capitals, you can go about it doing it in a similar way to the way that I fit the lowercase, where you do something like this, where you type out the H's and the O's and you fit them together. Uh, like this and then you keep putting the capitals in between the standards but I think that's not a very good way to work with fitting the capital letters because if you think about a text let's go look at a text what is the most common graphic element that you see other than the fact that these are letters and it's a sans serif typeface what's the most common typographic or let's say uh, script element that you see in this text lowercase letters. You see some numbers and you see some capital letters. You see some punctuation but you see mostly lowercase letter forms. So therefore we need to fit the lowercase letters to work really well together and then we need to fit and even design the capitals so that they work really well with the lowercase letters. So that's why I think the best way to fit um, capital letters is to fit them in context to the lowercase so for instance, um, what I would do is I would have something like uh, this. Instead of fitting the H, which is a symmetrical character anyways, uh, I can't think of a word actually that I can make, or him actually, there you go. I have to say to myself, this H is going to be symmetrical on both sides, but I think right now that word him looks way too far apart. What if it's 30? And that's a bit better. It's making a pretty good word image, but I think it could even be a little bit closer together. A little too close. I'm going to do this. That's what I want for this. Usually when I'm developing a typeface, I'm going to go back to this Sergio Sans font again. Usually this is the kind of string that I get going. I get a kind of running string. And then I'll be putting the capital letters in here and fitting them with the lowercase, seeing what their relationship is as I design them. Well, actually, I want to throw that down here. So that's the way that I tend to work on it. But this is another way you can do it. But when you get it in a kind of string, then you can see, okay, actually, this feels like it's comfortable in the pattern. But really, this is the way I do it. I would do it. If I had an R, I could do something like... Uh, something like this or even something like this. The thing about R, so it'll take the same value as the H, but on its left hand or its right hand side, it can be a tough character. This is a pretty square R, but if you get an R that has a splayed leg like that sticks out further, that's going to cause more spacing uh, issues. This is actually a better this design is easier to fit, not necessarily better. It works really well with this letter form design. But it is easier to work with. I'm going to give it 10. And so you would just go through that pattern. Now if I wanted to fit punctuation, the way that I do that is I test it out in words. And a really great thing to do is to grab one of these things, one of these kind of threads, and throw in the punctuation into some different scenarios. Because obviously a real text would have a lot of you know, periods, commas, depending on what you're using. And what you're doing is when you're fitting these punctuation marks, you're trying to say to your, like you're, you're looking at it and you're saying to yourself, what is comfortable for these characters to make a good word image? Does this, you know, and does keeping the exclam as a symmetrical, does that add a, too much extra word space? Should I actually keep it pretty minimal. 
so that I don't mess with the word space too much, which I think is a valid concern for book typography, for text typography anyways. So all I'm trying to do is think of myself as a reader. We all read. We all recognize a pattern of text. There's none of us in this course who do not read. So we are subconsciously, we're all readers, which makes us, you know, qualified to be type designers in, in one sense because we can judge the pattern of reading. This comma has to actually get pretty tight. You might even see with a comma, let's see what it looks like after an N instead of that. Yeah, the comma has to get a pretty, um, pretty uh, small value on that left hand side. Okay, that's going to be everything for this video. You would do the same kind of thing for bold light along your design space continuum. Uh, that's actually an interesting note too about the design space continuum. When you're fitting in there, you're fitting your masters and you're trying to think about how does the fitting behave just like the, let's say the weight or width or optical size, how does that all behave as a constant kind of gradation from the light to the bold, from the condensed through to the normal to the wide. Okay, that's all for this video.